Blog Talk Radio. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, world? It's badass thugging like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, because we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsters 2000 and beyond. Yo, yo, check this out. This is your girl, Cola Boke, and I'm chilling with my boys right here on Off the Cuff Radio. Because we off the cuff right now. You big? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh. What's up? What's up? It's your boy, Lil Yap, with UNLV. Ragging up from the river. Cooling with my homies and my family at Off the Cuff Radio. Y'all be sure to tune in on Fridays and get the latest scoop and find out what's happening. You wait me? Tiffany Levine. And this Queen Crazy, your girl, favorite bartender. And we're from Sex on the Rocks Podcast. All right, you're now tuning in to Off the Cuff Radio. Yeah, because they keep representing that world hip hop. Well, much love. All right. Giving a shout out to the live show on Friday nights off the cuff radio. And I'm live from the 704. Make sure y'all tune in for the blazing hot music. Hey y'all, this is Stacey Lachey giving a shout out to King Eric and off the cuff radio. What's shaking, y'all? This is the grand. One half of Lost Cause and one third of that drive time thing. Sending my love to the homies over at Off The Cuff Radio. Tune in every Friday night for some real deal hip-hop conversation. These dudes are the connoisseurs of this thing. You already know what it is. BX Stand Up, Hud City, we're shaking. Peace. Yo, this is Joe Fresh to Dine, and y'all tuned in to the most raw, uncut show on radio. The guillotine team, Off The Cuff, and yo, Eric Sandman, Off The Cuff. With my brother Cam. No disrespect to the East Coast Cam, but I'm talking about the West Coast Cam. This Cam has been very consistent about a very consistent message. Culture boy, use a vulture boy. Culture boy, and recognize your culture boy. My culture never been boy, use a vulture boy. All money boy. ain't good money. Ain't no devil KB ever steal my If you a joke. mental dead king or a queen, they got the darkest genes. And they gon' try to pick your carcass clean Trademark your dream and shark tank your thing Take off and fly right to the bank Can't see you under they wing Business part to see the street is what you marrying See you just what these real predators eat You just carrying That's roadkill or cold deal Side effects be varying This virus is a flesh eater Red ain't no vegetarian Vultures of the cultures trying to rise eyebrows They don't want it when they hunted by these wise Oh wow Finna learn to keep the NOI name out your mouth And bullshit lies about fire kind inside your vow Best you just a motherfucking guest inside our house Fake identity jackets, blood suckers of our style Crackers trying to call foul on facts like y'all rest All the while y'all responsible for thousands of these black deaths And black deaths preaching to the choir Damn lies, anti-Semitic, parasitic, leeching vampires Dead thugs and flicks with tuxedos Y'all just some bed bugs, fleas, ticks and mosquitoes So I'm repelling you the brave-hearted street way Hip-hop, silver, garlic, and slave heat spray Hey DJ, won't you play? Play my song. A lot of niggas ain't gon' say this shit cause they not strong. Use a vulture, boy. Just a vulture, boy. All money ain't good money. sight of my culture, boy. Use a vulture, boy. A vulture, boy. Can't no devil KB ever steal my joy. Is she a vulture bird? A vulture bird. A Jezebel of this culture. You heard she a vulture bird. A vulture bird. That's right. Can't no devil pussy ever change my word. Yeah. I ain't messing with this vulture, nigga. Yeah, my so-called cult. We the essence of this culture, nigga. Ready to dope. I ain't no rapping slave hand. This is the incredible Hulk versus Captain Caveman. You know them chosen people clothes don't fit. That's why you call the God prophecy some bozo shit. That's how your nose gon' split. Get you slid oh so quick. Like Ricky Rose did you. Update my promo kit. Since you be always dropping names, I got you fame and cash. Get some clout off of this knockout. Shout out Damon Dash. Nigga, your race came last. You just a baby playing hops. Scott, original case, fuck up out of here, Sasquatch. Just a vulture, boy. Just a vulture, boy. All money boy. ain't good money. A parasite of my culture, boy. Use a vulture, boy. A vulture, boy. Can't no devil KB ever steal my joy. Is she a vulture bird? A vulture bird. A Jezebel of this culture. You heard she a vulture bird. A vulture bird. Can't no devil 
pussy ever change my word. Not everybody's cut from the same car. But those that are, are with us. Cha-cha. Let's go. The Eastern and the West is in the house. Let's go. The Eastern and the West is in the house. Let's go. The East and the West is in the house. Shout out to my brother Todd. And we are now at episode 342. What it do, y'all? This is your boy, King Eric the Great. And you're now tuned in to the Live is Hip Hop show on Friday nights off the cuff radio. Sponsored by Cocaine's Buddy Boy Entertainment. Sponsored by. Dirty Basement, sponsored by Soon to Be Screwball Radio, and I got my host T Max with the facts in the building. What it do, King? It's Friday night, another episode of All T O T C and the place to be, and we all to the races, man. And look, we got a special special guest tonight, man. Now, I don't know if this is him on the line, but I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the dice on here. If not, y'all could just you know chalk that as an L that he didn't call through yet. But here's what I'm gonna do. I gotta give him the formal introduction, man. Do it, do it. Now, tonight's guest here. I gotta give y'all the breakdown. This brother's contribution to the game is certainly not overlooked. From laying the game down flat on albums such as Never Again, Made in America, Camnesia, and recently Mutual Respect. He has a new album in coming. He's here to talk about the Culture Vultures single, and he's possibly about to lace us with some more wisdom. Now, I don't know if this is him on the line. If not, just chalk the L. We'll just redo the L again. So let's see if we got West Coast Cam on the line. Okay, let's see. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? Yeah, this is me. Yeah. I was calling for <laughs> calling from another number. You know, what I'm saying? I don't know who over there reading the uh, uh, the numbers and says, you know, I can't give up. What's up with y'all, man? Off the cuff radio was that? Was that uh, Culture Vultures off the cuff enough? Oh look, yeah, that man, was beautiful. Look. Man, Cam, it is an honor and a privilege. Shout out to Watch City, where you born and raised and rep. And yo, man, it's Yo, you're like one of my one of my most all time favorite MCs, man. I mean, going back to Boys in the Hood soundtrack in nineteen ninety one with your official debut every single weekend and of course on nineteen you know, when you did Peace Treaty releasing that, I still remember that first verse. Ten corners in a six tray Chevrolet, rag top and top <laughs> top dollar. Got my cousin laid back riding shotgun. Plus, I got the front and back hydraulic hot ones juiced up, and I'm itching to hit the switches. Crawling over train uh-huh. tracks, avoiding all digits. Ice skating on the 20-inch tires. Jacked up the ass to flex the gold dating wife. <laughs> now I'm down to the career. Getting get jeeked on the long contact list. I'm in Hollis, I'm pretty sure. Niggas hang loose. Looking for my uh-huh. homies to celebrate the gang truth. Oh, man. Can't fake that. You can't fake that. You must really know something about that. Dude, I mean, <laughs> you are one of the stage, the stage wisdom of all of Los Angeles, man. I mean, you have always kept it down, ten toes, you know, for the culture and just for everybody, man. And I mean, you know, we're, we're it's an honor and privilege to have you on because we really, really, on off the cuff, like King, you know, you and him talked, you know, prior to. Right. We want to give flowers to the living legends while they're alive. And you are definitely a legend, and we want to really have a sit down with you for a couple hours, and you know, tell your story. You know, from your beginnings to the, you know, past to the, you know, present and the future. So uh, the floor is yours, please. Right, right. I, it's, it seems like it's a few seconds delay too, like on uh, on this on this line. But it, <clears throat> so if I don't respond right away, just know that I'm I'm still hearing the, the two or three second delay, but. Nah, it's my honor, y'all, man. It's it's my pleasure. You know, it's it's my honor. And, you know, just to represent, like you said, our culture, which is a, a culture of, unfortunately, uh, oppression and injustice, and that's where he, he, this music, these art forms come from, whether it's gospel, soul, R&B, jazz, and, and lastly, hip-hop or rap, you know, the music form is, 
is us expressing our dissatisfaction and our frustration and and the, and the pain and the struggles that we go through, and it comes out in the music. That's why everybody can feel it. They don't they don't experience right. what we experience, but they feel it. So I'm I'm just blessed to be an instrument that that people can really feel. And you know we we had a, an award to not let it get uh, totally hijacked, or it, it was totally hijacked. Now we're trying to hijack it back and take back our power and our ownership of it, and and make it affect the people the way that that we want it to affect. Definitely. Now, in terms of it, because people really have to understand how far you go back. Um, your first initial appearance, you know, was on the Boys in the Hood soundtrack, 1991, every single weekend. That was the first song off the of side, too. And, I mean, you know, of course, that was played during the scene where everybody, you know, in that scene, of course, where, you know, everybody out and, you know, got the cars out, you know, right. and just chilling, you know what I'm saying? And, um, hmm. you know, and that that's like, you know, but to really listen to that song, man, I mean, you were really kicking it about what goes on in the hood, man. I mean, how, how'd you start writing rhymes and how'd you end up getting that placement on that soundtrack album? Um, I started writing rhymes <clears throat> in elementary school um, and it wasn't rap. It was just poetry. I, I, you know, I was always gifted. I, I knew how to draw, you know, as a, as a child, I was gifted with the, the, the talent to be able to, to, to draw freehand and, and, and write short stories and write poems and poetry. So I, at, in second grade, third grade, I used to actually make money, like make a quarter or 50 cent or whatever from my classmates when, when holidays or Valentine's day or whatever come around and my classmates don't want a, 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 a Valentine's day card or a greeting card, a mother's day card or something. They'll tell me their mother's name and I write them a little poetry, poetry rhyme and, and draw them a picture and make a greeting card out of it. You know, so they, they take that home and get some hugs and kisses from their mama. So I was all, I was always doing this. I just, I just didn't, I didn't know nothing about, uh, uh, music, you know, adding music to it yet. And, you know, I'm from a musical right. fan. I, ne- I never know how to play an instrument. My grandmother, and uncles and mother and all that, you know, God be pleased with them. Um, all played instruments and and sang a little, but I didn't I didn't have that gift. So once rap came along and <clears throat> and you didn't need to be able to carry a tune or carry a note, and, you know, or play an instrument because you know all, they, all you needed was a mic and some turntables and, and just know how to stay on beat. And that was right up my alley. So that was like love at first sound for me. So that's how I started. That's what it is. Now, what was it like during that time yeah. in the early 90s, of course? Um, because, I mean, we're still, you know, we're coming out of, because, of course, you know, King, an ace journalist in his own right, you know, shout out to our co host and spirit, you know, right. a lot of Sam and Lady Chinchilla, um, who right. are our frequent peace, collaborators. Peace, peace yes. And uh, we always talk on and off the air about the stages of hip hop from the nascent beginnings. Really, if you really want to get technical, going back to the days with James Brown, who really kind of started that uh, the rhythm, you know, ad libs, you know, of course, going to the last poets, ref, you know, rest in peace, Gil Scott Heron. Then, of course, you get into 78, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's Delight, and then you start going into the 80s, you know, where you really start seeing the culture, you know, personal issues yeah. aside, you know, with Africa Bambada, you know, giving it its name, of course. But people have to understand right. – that the culture itself was born out of the marginalization and the struggle of our black and brown brothers, you know, sisters and brothers who sought to have their own form of expression. So we're going through the 80s to the to the beginning with LL, Run DMC, Beastie Boys. Then we go into the late 80s, of course, with the African move. You know, the you know the Black to Africa, of course, KRS One, right. Four Righteous Teachers, right. X Clan, you know, Nefertiti, mm-hmm. yes, um, of course. Right. And then we get into the nineties, Gangster Rap, you know, Ice Cube, huh. you know, with NWA, Compton's most wanted, you know, DJ Quick will come later. And right. of course you come along during that era huh. as well. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, what was it like coming <laughs> along just watching the Because not only – because NWA of course people talk about how they were the pioneers of gangster rap, they were the ones that mm-hmm. made it big. You got to take it back to 1986 with Ice-T's, Ron Hayes, and Schooly D's, you know, Saturday night, 
which were really the first two seminal gangster rap albums, you know, that right, were kind of right. come behind each actually, other. Yeah, actually, in, ahead, in, in the neighborhood, in the, in the hood, the, the first albums was, was Toddy T, you know what I'm saying? Mix Master okay. Spade, rest in peace, Got Toddy it. T with the, with the Bataram, the Mix Masters, Mix Master Ken, DJ Star. That was all some, some Compton and Watson, L.A. Uh, local beginnings where we, we knew that's where it started. So the first one to actually you. hit radio, you know what I'm saying, was like a, was like a, a iced tea or, or – even even Tidy T came with you know they had, they made him do a cleaned up version of the Bataram, but that was all gang banging and drug dealing lyrics. That was all hood mixtape. That, that that was the original mixtapes when they were literally right. cassette tapes. In, you know, and and he was mixing to them and shouting out your neighborhood and shouting out this gang or that gang or you know the homies that was that was hustling and making money or whatever. So it was like some 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 underground railroad type of stuff. You know, letting you know what, you know, what Fed's about to hit this neighborhood and who was hot in the neighborhood. So it was, it was, it was really like, like, uh, you know, what we always use music for on the plantation up until, you know, up until t- today, basically. <clears throat> and the first, speaking of the, yeah, speaking of the first rap though form of, you know, hip hop, actually, it was a group. A, a singing group, like I think it's a four-man group called the Jubilaires. If you can go check them on, on YouTube right now, it's the Jubilaires. They was either 1940s or 1950s. It's a black and it's some black hmm. and white footage footage of them. Check that out. That was actually the first rap or first, you know, it, it was far long be, before James Brown. So you can go on YouTube and check that out. So you know, gotcha. I'm a real student. You know, I try to go as far back as possible in in, in history and, and giving credit to. To the ancestors that a lot of us, you know, might not be aware of or never come across. So, but yeah, me coming up, man, at, at, at in the '90s, um, like you said, starting out from nothing and then you know hitting the scene with with Ice Cube. Um, and actually, I think my first uh, appearance was on Death Certificate before before. Uh, fact, I'm not blind. sure. I think. Colorblind. Yeah, colorblind. colorblind. Yeah, yeah. Like colorblind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was you, threat. Oh man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. 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 And uh, serve the, the prison in, industrial complex and all of those things. They're not they're not theories. They actual real conspiracies. Um, as far as that specific person that was saying that that type of that meet, meeting happened or whatever, I, I can't vouch for that. I don't know who that was, but I know that that was the agenda. I, I witnessed that myself. Well, you're not. Well, one thing about it is you're not you're not wrong about that because we have had we've talked to a couple of people on. Um, you know, on air at a little bit and off the air where we there has been confirmation of those meetings happening. Because one thing about it yeah. is we're looking at where hip-hop started. And, you know, people, you know, of course, we've had a lot of the naysayers, detractors, you know, C. Delores mm-hmm. Tucker, you know, Calvin Butt, mm-hmm. you know, so many people right. who were trying to go against us simply for the stories that we were telling in the hood and they were saying we were glorifying violence. But I'm like, no, I mean, if we really talk about, you know, especially from your side of the West, you know, I'm from the East, you know, mm. East coast, Virginia, right. you know, South side, right. you know, Hampton roads, but I was riding with y'all, you know, shout out, you know, to the sixties, you know, bounty hunters, right. you know, Pyrus, right. everybody, man, Kelly Park, you know, all yep. y'all out there, man, grape street, you know, out of Watts, man, right. and I rock with y'all, right. man, you know, right. and, um, you know, and it's, it's like y'all were just telling y'all story from what a lot of people didn't understand on the East Coast. You know, and right. really, y'all were dropping, yeah, y'all were dropping, y'all were mixing um, medicine with the food, and that's and mm. you know when you hear mm. people with that double combination, a lot of the facts, mm. especially those in power, get scared of that because it's like yeah, the music was sonically good, but it also 
had a good contained message as well. So when you hit her with that double yeah. dose, it's like, yo, we got to find a way to shut this down. Yeah, yeah, that's that that J. Edgar Hoover. You know, if they if they yeah, see Cointel Pro, some, some, Cointel Pro, Cointel Pro, they trying to stop stop the unification of these this army. You know what I'm saying? Because you know these ex slaves, especially the males, that's what they is written about in the Bible and stuff like that. You know, they fear that that they would they would join on to you know come together and join on to the uh, enemy of theirs, meaning Pharaoh or the government, and, and come against them in a time of war. So that. Hip hop, that rap was a hundred percent the voice of the of these young soldiers and warriors. So when you hear that voice starting to be directed against the police, which is which is which was established for the purpose of of capturing slaves in slavery anyway, you know what I'm saying? So you know we started catching on and speaking that f f the police, uh, you know NWA or Ice T six in the morning police at my door, or you know. Uh, yeah, that that was that was what was revolutionary and, and gangster about it. It wasn't just we was on some you know blood and crip stuff, but we we was on some uh, you know one eight seven on a on a undercover, undercover cop, cop, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna use the and MF word, but you, but that that that's that the real revolutionary, but gangster. That's the real RBG. That's the real gangster rap right there. And they, they 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 had to redirect that against each other, have us going at each other like that instead of going at them like that. Now it gets deeper yeah, too, Cam, because yeah. Oh, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's what. Then that's why, in a way, you see a lot of these corporations. They love you know pumping beef and stuff like that. They like they they eat love right. off that. Right. Right. Yeah. On a on a on a like you said on a corporate level on a privatized prison level. And you know it's killing three and four and five birds with one stone, all fitting the agenda of maintaining, you know, racist white supremacy. You you know what I'm saying? In their in their quote unquote in their country. Now it gets deeper, Cam, because I watched the Showtime documentary from 2017, "Burn, Motherfucker, Burn," and you had a very right. interesting uh, statement to make about what was going on because everybody knows about the train tracks. Out in L.A., I yeah. watched you were saying, and I, look, I think, uh, and everybody, look, if you know, if you if you watched a lot of rap videos in the '90s, <laughs> you're like I did, yeah. you know exactly where it was. Yeah. You thought about how a lot yeah. of guns were left out there for everybody to just ha- kind of have a free for all to get what they wanted, and you know, take them back to the hood, and whatever happened, happened. Yep, yeah. exactly, and that's uh, that's part of the the CIA and FBI, CIA. Uh, Operations to, to destabilize governments. That's the same thing that I'm not, for y'all that's not aware of a, a older white man named John Perkins. Look him up on YouTube, on YouTube or Google, and he's the author of a book called Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And he, mm-hmm. he exposes how the CIA and the government get together and use money and guns and drugs and other resources and, and, and funnel them to dissatisfied factions of every little city and town in every in every different country and and inspire them and motivate them to go against righteous governments of, of their area you know a lot of them be you know already corrupted and corruptible and and you know you give them drugs and you give them money unlimited supply of money and resources and political protection and that's how they did with us. As soon as the, uh, the curtain fell, uh, uh, the Soviet Union and all that fell, they, they called all of those. When, fall of 1991 right, when, they the, called, when communism right. fell. And even before right. that. They called all those agents back Yeah, and reassigned right. them among the black community. And you got to look at it before that, too, because you're looking at it, of course, um, you know, shout out to the real Ricky Ross. You know, we had him on the show a couple right. of times. You know, a friend of ours. Right. And, of course, you know, shout out to, you know, John Singleton, rest in peace, you know, with Snowfall. But even before then, we have to tell, you know, we cannot stress this enough because it's been confirmed. You know, uh, if you watch Blow, if you watch American Mm. Made, you know, although those Mm. movies were directly different, they are companion pieces because they talk about how the, you know, of course, we were fighting the, what was it, it was a, 
And Chetney, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Cam. Sandinistan government. We're the Sandinistan government, yeah. and we were funding them against the Contras, which will eventually right. go to the Iran Contra affair with Ali Noor. Uh, in 80, right, 85, right. 86, when they were having those trials, uh, also a lot of, and I'm only saying this because this is historical fact. <laughs> People may get pissed, but this is fact. Reagan <laughs> barely missed impeachment at the time about that. They, a lot of people don't know yeah. Reagan barely missed impeachment behind his involvement with that. Right. You know, right. Uh, so the, this is something that is historically documented, of course, with Ali Noor, Ronald Reagan. You know, this goes back to the war on drugs in the 80s, which but was, was preset right. in 1970 by Nixon and the war on drugs right. then. Um, so, I mean, we're right. looking at how all of this correlates to what was going on today. And going into the 90s, mm. we Saul, um, and of course, Cam, you know, King will tell you, on this show, we do our best to be, jo- mm-hmm. and as journalists, to be credible, to be accurate, and you're never going to write anybody. <laughs> <Yeah. on> <laughs> you know, but we speak the facts of how things happen. Now, what happened right. was in the 90s was we see, you know, hardcore rap, you know, like I said, shout out to King T, everybody who was really coming along in right. 88 and beyond. What we're seeing is the music change. MC Hammer was considered, you know, of course, you know, the mainstream rapper, but even then he was being usurped because of where right. the culture started shifting. So we're seeing more of a harder mm-hmm. edge from East and West Coast. Um, where do you think across the board it started to change where um, – and we got a couple hours, so I mean, take as much time as you want uh-huh. to answer because we got a lot to talk about anyway. <laughs> we haven't even gotten uh-huh. everything yet. So I mean, we just thirty minutes in, and we already cover like eight different topics. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, where yeah. do you think it all started in terms of where it just started happening, where it became from telling real stories that were cautionary tales rooted in real situations to where we. <laughs> We kind of have where it's like we just have a lot of you know a lot of brothers out here you know just straight up niggas just want to just go nuts out here and not really care about the consequences. Where did it all change? Um, it changed with the with with the bag. It changed with you know the enemy finally throwing big big checks or big bags at us where we never had before and um. You know, earlier in the in the in the late eighties, you know, they, they was already terrified once they heard uh public enemies or, or rock kims. Well, you know, we when, when we 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 turn into certain concepts of like, like Islam or warrior, like, you know, uh right. with, with Chuck D yeah. yeah, exactly. So when you start when you start now adding the word devil, you know what I'm saying, like Chuck D say, you know, uh, straight up devils, you know, word them up on the level or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, now it's a red flag. Now it's a problem. Now, now they, they, they waking up, they, they on to us. So they take, they're talking about a lot. They talking about black, they talking about Africa. Now they talking about a lot, but now worse than all of that, they calling us devil. Uh Oh, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So now we have to, we have to distract them. We have to do the ultimate distraction, whatever we was depriving them of, before we got to we got to produce, produce a big production and look like now they they have full access to it. What, what, what y'all like? Y'all like our women? Y'all like y'all like money? You like cars? You like jewelry? Like we got we got you want millions of dollars? You know we gotta we gotta distract you with all of that. We gotta try to you know lull you to sleep and and make it all about the bag. You know this is how you get the bag. Y'all want money, right? Y'all y'all been you know st- starving and poor for four hundred years. You I know you want money, so it's the it's the money thing that did it. You know, right, and it's and it's wild, Cam, because when we look at the eighties and the nineties, it, it, it's something. Uh, me and King, we talk about this all the time. Just when we see the gradual, you know, I mean, when you're looking at the Ferraris and you know the Bentleys, this mm. is stuff that, like, in the eighties, was just like. I mean, mm. when you look at the when you look at a lot of the jewelry and the dress. Uh, fresh was always an effect for the culture, but you know you didn't really right. see like the big expensive stuff probably till right. around maybe ninety, maybe ninety four, ninety five, and then when we nah, get I'd say to probably about two thousand. I'd probably say about two thousand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, ninety eight, ninety eight, because we got out. the cash money too. 
98, too, because we got their cash money. So that's when we really started seeing the bling mm. era come in. Um, mm. I mean, if you if, – yeah, because if you had a Roly, because that first time I saw – and this is no shout. There's no. There's no, no shout. Uh, I mean, shot. Yeah. There's no shot to Jay Z. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm a huge Jay Z fan. Um, but Jay Z was like one of the first, you know, artists I've seen, you know, who was rocking a Roly, like on the regular. And even then, um, I'll take it back even further for a lot of the heads that really don't be understanding one of the Bay Area's living legends, Aunt Banks. You know, I've seen him right. in a pic, uh, picture right. years ago. He was rock. This is like in like ninety five, ninety six. He was rocking a rollie. So it's like you were seeing, you were kind of being able to tell on those little elements who was really getting the money, and then when everybody started getting the money. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's just yeah, wild, my opinion. Man. I mean, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, my opinion. Like I said, is is what you was getting the money for. What what were you getting the money? What were you getting all that money for? You know what I'm saying? Right. Because prior to that, of course, you had the, the LL Cool J, you know what I'm saying? You know, young ones that we know, you know, was getting, getting, getting bread, you know, at Def Jam, like run DMC, you know, mm-hmm. um, but but his image was, you know, ladies love Cool J. He was really an MC. He was fresh. So, he didn't really fall into that that category like he got uh uh seduced you know by 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 the industry or nothing like that but he mm-hmm. people like that was used like you you want to be like LL you want to have a fat gold chain you want to have girls and cars like LL like they they would still use him and people like that you know to bait the 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 dumber ones of us in and say not nah, you know gradually they, cuz they knew not to really Try to try to do it too fast and extreme, but gradually, you know, talk more about this. Make can, can you keep it more street? Can you talk more about street stuff? You know, more NWA is you know. That, so they started using those that that had certain aspects of that, that fit their agenda to their to their benefit and, and pushing the new artists to do more and more of that. Right. I could probably say that and it changed it, around when the emphasis was more focused on sound scan. Because when Soundscan yeah. came out, mm. that's when everybody had to focus heavy on those first week numbers. And if you won't crack in, like, when N.W.A. came out in 91, I believe, with uh, Niggas for Life, they cracked the sound scan and broke the record. Mm. And when mm. people, they start seeing those numbers, they like, look, you want to rap like them, or you got to do it like them so we can get that sound scan up. So I think the sound scan played a mm. key role. Yeah, I think so too. And but but we also know that sound scan, just like streaming and all of that, or or, or views or whatever on, on YouTube, that's all just a machine of the same corporate uh, enemy. entity. Because right. entity, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because you, it's like voting. It's, we at the mercy of whatever they say it is anyway. I, I don't really know how many records are, so I really don't, you know. But whoever controls that controls the agenda. They can say, yeah, you you. You you sold two million, you know, just anything as an excuse to say this is what's selling, so they can they can right. lie. No, that's not what's selling. That's that's what you say is selling, and that's what you will throw a check at. You'll write a big check for, but you want to blame it on sounds and the numbers. Oh yes, yeah, the numbers, the numbers. No, you you are doctoring the numbers. It's like they do on YouTube, you know, or they doing on on these views, and you don't got that many views and followers. You know, but it's like Takashi Six Nine or whoever. You know, yeah. You know, we when say, when it comes, to say that, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when it really comes down to it, you you can fluff and blow up and 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 put the extras on all of those all those those machines, but it's it's what the streets are gonna do. What the, what the streets say and rap and hip hop was always about what the streets uh, did, not what the machines did. And it's wild, Cam, because when you talk about LL, you know, uh, as I have a source, I literally have, like, every source magazine from 1994 to now. And I was trying to find mm. the one with you in it, I was, and I'm still going to dig through and find that shit, while, probably while we're doing this interview. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I remember the interview you did with them some years back, I believe, in 97. But LL yeah. did an interview in 95 with them, and he told, you know, and he was just talking about his career and of course, he was talking about 1989 when he did "Walking with a Panther," which was a straight-up party album. Now, this is still going yeah. in the time, of course, 
in the vein. We're still going through the era of, you know, KRS, Public Enemy, you know, uh, mm-hmm. all them. And, you know, this, 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 the conscious rap era, you know, and he was mm-hmm. talking about when he dropped that album, how he was hated for it because <laughs> it was in the community because it was not, it was so an outlier of what was going on in the culture at the time. You know, um, you know, so I mean, so as we go further into it, what was your motivation when you finally, because your album, because Never Again was released, I believe, in March or 1993, I believe it was March or April of 1993 it was released. Yeah, March yeah, what was the um I mean, what was your plan going into the studio knowing that like, yo, you got this, like this is your chance to really share your creative vision, you know, to the world? Um, I, I knew that um like seeing like Ice T's and, and and NWA and people from my neighborhood that, you know, that had a story to tell. I I know I had a story to tell. I know and I knew I had a um even though I was from that same hood experience, my, my new experience that I wanted to talk about was was my my consciousness. You know, I was just getting into the nation of Islam and how how I was able to translate that in West Coast street hood language. So I was anxious to be right. able to tell that them stories and those experiences and what I was seeing and what I was learning while I was learning it. You know what I'm saying? So that I was I was anxious to tell that story. So I I knew I didn't need to sound like nobody else even though I thought I was way behind and I thought everybody was light years ahead of me. But once I got in there and, and started, you know, you know, paving the way in, in my own little lane that I, I found out it was, it was a big field. It was wide open. So, you know, that kept me motivated and, you know, Q, you know, Cube had his own style that was already working and he used to be trying to push me to be, you know, do more, more gangsterish, you know, like, nah, nah, you know, you, you do that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I really live this, you know what I'm saying, but I'm trying to I'm trying to push this. You know, if I'm gonna say uh talk about killing or riding or whatever it's gonna be on the people that, that, that killed us for four hundred years. So I'm 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 on some black consciousness but it's it's hood gangster. So that was I, I was one of the original, you know, R R B G revolutionary but gangster. It was that it wasn't that, they didn't have those acronyms back then. Right. Two points I wanted to make, too, because, and this is no disrespect intended, it's actually just seeing how your style evolved from what you had on every single weekend to the debut, because these are two years, yeah. you know, uh, this is this is a two-year yeah. increment. And when I first heard the album, well, actually, before I heard the album, I saw the video for Peace Treaty. Before we actually get into uh. the album and the opening by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, Oh, man, right. that was like, when we saw the <laughs> opening, we was like, oh, man. <laughs> but what was that video like for Peace Treaty? Because this is coming a year off of the L.A. riots. And, I mean, you know, just, yeah. I mean, look, had to, look I, I, I'm a car buff, so I, I was already uh, strong on the low low. So it's like, and I mean, yeah. you, you really made it a point to really, like, bring everybody from that hood, you know, from the hood together. Right? Yeah. And what was your experience like growing up in Watts? Because Watts is, like, serious for those that really yeah, know. Yeah that's, yeah, that's the heart. You know, I'm from Willowbrook, so that's right between uh, Watts and Compton. So I got and the best or the worst from, or how whatever. How far is that from How far is that from Nickerson? Oh, no, no, I was, I was literally across the street, so I'm like, you know, a few uh, – Two or three blocks from the Nickerson. So Nickerson's was across okay. Imperial Highway. So I was on I was on the other my, my neighborhood is right across the the highway. So so Got I'm you. right there. But but it's also right next door to Compton to the to the border of Compton. So so okay. I'm 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 all the way in the mix of, of, of all of it. So I'm spending half my time in Compton and the other half in Watts, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um but yeah, just growing up there and and, and, and seeing the the or experiencing I should say the 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 racism and the and the, the white supremacist systematic police brutality that like that's what made us the way we are. That's what even started most of us quote unquote becoming gang members because we got classified. We got stopped by the police or the sheriffs and harassed and and, and asked where where you live at, where you from oh you were such and such, you know and, and they put you in the car. They, they if they arrest you or something, you spray paint or whatever. You know, a little mischief stuff we was getting into 
they'll they'll take us and throw it, you know take us to the to the county jail or whatever and throw us throw us in with the with, with real gang members, you know, from the other side and say that you know that you from this side and then you got you gotta defend yourself. So now next you know you you in gang fights and you got to side with your people that's that was actually banging. You wasn't necessarily banging. You just was from your neighborhood. And it it's a difference between being from a neighborhood. Everybody is from a neighborhood, a gang neighborhood. Right. That don't mean that you was a gang a gang banger. That don't mean you bang in that neighborhood. But the 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 the, the police make you be affiliated with that. They put you in a situation where other neighborhoods is going is going to get at you and 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 you know try to do harm to you and you got to defend yourself. Now you now you defending yourself in the name of this neighborhood and it really wasn't about that. So they they've been creating gang members, creating us to be gang members like we was like little video games or something. So you know to be able to to be able to tell those kind of stories in rap and and stop it. You know, I, I could focus on another black person or a, a Mexican or SA as my enemy because of the immediate manipulated circumstances, but I saw clearer than that. The nation information, you know, when I first started studying, like you say, from every single weekend, between every single weekend and peace treaty, obviously I was studying and, and studying deep about who my real enemy was. So by the time peace treaty came out of my... my you know, my solo album, yeah. you know, you, you heard that I was on a different track by then. Yeah, and, you know, um, in people that got time a, period, was it, mm-hmm. was it an issue in getting your content out there based off it being pro-black and anti-establishment? Was nah. You, did you go through a lot of issues? Not yet. Not yet. And that's why I was able to sleep, slip through the cracks. But, but by, the, by the time I, my album came out and they found out, you know, what I was saying and who I was affiliated with, meaning Minister Farrakhan, kind of, okay, then then they, you know, tried to put the white ball down. But by then it was too late because I was already fresh off of, you know, being, quote, unquote, Ice Cube's protege and, and his right-hand man who he was, you know, his go-to person on some personal business. Like, he put me on on the, on the music side, but I put him on on the brotherhood side, so... You couldn't separate us, so you know they they couldn't do nothing to me without without messing their bread and butter up with Ice Cube. So that's how I slipped in. Definitely, and people got to understand too, Cam, is that you know your city, you know is you know as real as they get, and it also has its own history going back to the Watts riots in 1965. Oh yeah, so people have to understand that. Revolution was already bred there in terms of what was going on. Um, as for the gangs, right. you know, people got to understand this in L.A. Uh, for how this started because a lot of these gangs were brought in reference to what was going on with a lot of the white mobs, that, like the spook hunters and all of them. Right. They were messing right. with a lot of the, um, you know, were messing with a lot of blacks. So, of course, you know, yep. and – I'm going to give people and I'm going to give our listeners once again a quick breakdown of the L.A. gang politics in terms of how a lot of this started. Because you have to go with Raymond Washington and Stanley Tukey and Tukey back Mm -hmm. in 1969 where the Crips were formed, which was initially Community Revolution and Progress. You know, Mm -hmm. um, the the etymology of Cribs or Crips, which it would would then become, Mm -hmm. of course, you know, could – Things got a little out of hand in terms of where some of the other gangs, you know, were, you know, kind of getting a little eaten up. That's where you had the Swansons, you had the businessmen, you had the gladiators, right. of course, Rams. the Kairos, you had the Mad Family Swans. Yeah. Well, the Swans, yeah. you know, uh, so you would have the Swans and the Kairos who were initially Crips. A lot of people don't right. know this, who eventually yeah. broke off their ties with the Crips and became Kairos, which by proxy in right. prison – the Bloods would come roughly around 70. Kairos, as we know, it started in 71. Bloods would start around 73, right. 74, a couple of years later. Um, right. So it's a, I told you, I thought and all, and all idea. Of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, and all of that for sure, for sure. And all of that was spin off of the Panthers. All that, And all of that was infiltrated right. by J. E- e- J. Edgar Hoover, COINTELPRO, FBI. Yeah. So, so yeah. the same way that the pa- Panthers was turned in on on each other, and they they became, you know, a lot of them was was funneled drugs, and 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 the guns was funneled to them also, and it was infiltrators and and agent provocateurs that that created you know, internal uh, problems and beef and division. That, that right. yeah, 
The same thing after, happened with with, after with the Crips. Got killed, especially after Huey Newton got yeah. killed, and there's still a lot of speculation about what was really going on with that situation. Of course, right, as well. Right. Um, and all it all it know, all it takes is a is a killing. All it takes is a loss of a, a loved one. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And we we not a a a, a wise patient military science t- taught people we've been reduced right. to slavery to be emotionalist we emotionalize everything so if you if if you take that we still warriors and we you know but we we easily manipulated through our emotions so if you if you cause one death or you get one of us to kill one of us then we're going to be enemies for life then we're going we're going we're going to be now programmed and dedicated and locked and focused on getting rid of you or you know what I'm saying instead of Trying to come to some kind of truth or whatever, something like that, like 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 they do, like the like the oppressors do, you know, they know that out of our emotions and our ignorance, you know, that that we're gonna cancel each other out, we're gonna go to war to the death with each other. And that's how a lot of it started happening internally with the gangs, especially after crack, you know, kid in '84. But even before that, an example of uh, where you know the emotions ran high, of course, with the long running. Um, beef between the you know between you know six thieves and eight rays, right. you right. know, um, right. and the Hoovers. you know, you know, yeah, and the Hoovers, Hoovers, because the Hoovers, a lot of people don't know this as well. The Hoovers start off crip, but then they ended up breaking off. Changed, they still keep their blue foundation of the colors, but they went to orange, and they're simply known as Hoover criminals now. But they pretty much broke mm-hmm. off. But usually, what you have is one of the most popular was uh, you had a. Uh, What's it? Um, is it 52? 52 Hoover Crip. That's Five one of the most popular sesh. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Schoolboy Q, TDE doing his thing. He five dudes. You know, mm. so it's um, yeah, man. Um, and like you said, easily uh, manipulate emotionally. Cam, you're right. We talk yeah. about this all the time about how as black people, it's okay to be angry and it's okay to have action, but have um, have strategy. Have right. a concerted effort and make sure that the goal of it is for the good of everybody and not just for a few. And sometimes we see these different agendas that do not always coincide with the greater good of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, right. Where do you think hip hop is that? Where do you think hip hop is that today, with such a fractured at times and separatist? A mentality in terms of where you have a lot of the young heads feeling like they ain't got to respect the old and then some of the old not really feeling what the young people are doing and just a lot of confusion and conflict. And what are your feelings? Uh, it's, it's like we said earlier, it's not about my feelings. It's about my intelligent assessment. Feelings don't really mean nothing at this point, and that's that's the problem. Right. That's, where we, that's why we're in the condition that we're in. And it's, it's an issue of like you said, discipline or, or righteous, disciplined organization. You can't really have no organization or no proper unity without discipline, and that discipline ain't going to be effective if it's not righteous discipline, if it's based on righteous morals and laws and rules. So right. now if you got somebody that's telling you cash rules everything around you and you don't need to do nothing but be disciplined about get this bag and, and your life don't mean nobody life don't mean nothing. Your mama life don't mean nothing. Re- respect for life don't mean nothing. Then that's, that's the Satan or that's the enemy that like once again has used this, this currency, this medium, so-called medium of exchange called money to, to diffuse all the righteous moral fabric and, and fiber and character that that's necessary for, for us to be united. You know, if 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 you not nothing, if you ain't got no money, all that nigga broke. You broke. Like I ain't listening to you. You broke. Okay, well, the only thing that's gonna trump that, <clears throat> no pun intended, is is people right. like Trump, where where they're organized and they're more wicked, and they're gonna destroy you worse than you destroying each other. That's what caused the, the gang truce, the, the blood and crypt truce in '92, is what they what we right. all saw. Happened to Rodney King by them fight five white male police. Here we go with the police again. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And seeing him, him get beat on camera, and then seeing them all get acquitted and walk away scot free. That's what made us who was killing each other come together. We we 
We're not going to do it just on on good conscience. It has to be a superior, more deadly enemy coming at us that's going to make us get together and stand up as an army. And you know the yeah. cold part, Cam, yeah. is your music, whenever you drop an album, it just seems like perfect timing because mm. 93, that happened, and 95, that was a wild year, too. You, know, you had the OJ trial, yeah, yeah. you had yeah, Iron yeah. Man that was man. coming out, then you had... Uh, yeah, it was the Million Man Day March. Comedy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, man. man talking so. about the the Made in America album, which was one of my favorite albums, man, because that spoke to me. Yeah. And it gave me a lot of gems. Nineteen ninety seven. Uh, uh, I was not, I think it was ninety five. It was ninety five. It was ninety five. Yeah, okay, it was ninety five. Because matter of fact, you had a Pump Your Fist, and that was off the Pump Your Fist soundtrack as well. Mm. That joint. Mm. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man. Man, yeah. yeah. Okay, then do you tell? Do you care to tell the people for the masses? You know, because you know a lot of our audience, for the most part, were born in the late nineties. Can you tell the people right. like how vital the Million Man March really was? Just to see a million black men just coming together and no fighting, no drama, none of that. Right. Not one incident. That was the most historic. Uh, Unbelievable, miraculous thing that you ever would um, see, and the, it, it it was such a, a revolution. It was such an unpredictable. The the the, the whole Washington D.C. shut down. The, the president went in his underground b- bunker or whatever, or, or got out of town or whatever because, and they had military tanks everywhere underground because they thought it was just going to be a bloodbath. It was it was nearly two mo- two million. Black men, black males that got together, we thought we was going, I'm just going to tell you straight up, we thought we was going to die. You know what I'm saying? We thought we was going, oh, wow. you know, yeah, going, to, not 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 to die, but, you know, to 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 to, to do what, you know, to to, to fight. It might, we was that, going to it might fight. Something and we different. Would, it, might, it could have been something different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we was going for. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and a lot of us, the, the but you know, but the theme, of course, was reconciliation. It was atonement. We wanted to atone. It was called atonement. So we wanted to reconcile with each other as men first for the for the killing and the drama and the irresponsibility and all the stuff that we've been doing to ourselves and to each other, and then to our women. You know, what I'm saying uh, to, to become fathers and to, and to heal the wounds and take accountability for for our, our, our dogness and our on our lameness and our abusive you know, and, and all of that that we was doing to our women. So it, it was really a spiritual, it was a a, 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 a global a spiritual cleansing. example, cleansing, right. there you a go, cleansing. purifying, yeah. a purging, and a, and a public confession, you know, mm. atonement to, for, for the world to see. So we, so, so we would have a justification now for, for really riding on any enemy that, that, that violates us after that. Because prior to that, you know, they they like, well, why are you complaining if the, you know, if the, if the white police is killing you, you guys are killing each other, your gangbangers killing. Okay, well, we, this was this is going to put a stop to that. You don't got that excuse no more. We ain't killing each other no more like that. So that and I got they hand a certain kind of way. Go ahead. And I got to come in on that too, Cam, because see, this is something that they try to use as a racial qualifier to try to disqualify black people from speaking about violence against police, you know, about violence with, you know, with mm-hmm. police uh, on us. And I'm going to say this because Dr. Eric, My- Michael Eric Dyson said this in the most articulate, profound way that I've ever heard it broken down because people have to understand exactly the history of where all this started going back to, I believe, 1947, 48, when, it, you know, mm-hmm. the United States government made it illegal for segregation and housing. So mm-hmm. black people could move anywhere they wanted to after that. So, because a lot of people don't know that Compton was, this is where I'm going with all this. A lot of people did not yeah. know that Compton pro- was predominantly white, and then the white well, flight oh, came yep. when all the black people started to move in. A lot right. of people don't know the that. Grand Wizard, the Grand the Grand Wizard. I mean, Grand Dragon, wh- whichever the top dude from the KKK was was. He was, he lived in Compton, a white white man from he was from Compton. Compton was white. Yeah, and so what we have now is, and what Dyson broke down, um, 
that part of the history I studied myself. The other part of it is that when you're dealing with a situation of the black people who are upperly mobile to move out of the hood and get to a better place, you know, you still had a lot of, you know, the, you know, less disadvantaged who are still in the hood. So we are not necessarily talking right. about black on black crime more than we are talking about community on community violence, because violence in terms mm-hmm. of color is going to happen in the proximity of the people that live there, where white people mm-hmm. are going to have problems. We're going to have violence where white people live. Very rarely are you going to see, I don't think we're going, and this is no, you know, not a shot to any white people, you know, we, we, we speak real discussions, but we're not out to right. roast anybody. But I'm like, we're not right. going to see no white person come up in Compton these days with an AK trying to start some shit. We're not going to see that. Nah. <laughs> Just like we're not nah, going to see a black see that. man walk up in a white neighborhood and start spraying up shit. It's not going to happen. But we will see it. Well, well, let me, let, me, where... let me stop you. Let, let okay, me stop ahead, you on that. It, it, ahead, it, it, it is going to happen, and it has been happening. It's just called sheriff and police, or it's called uh, National you. Guard. So Understood. those are the Understood. white people that's going to come through, you know what I'm saying, and, and have been coming through doing that. Understood. Understood. Point taken, yes. But it's like but when you're dealing with a lot of the issues in the hood, they, when we speak on the violence that happens to us from the agencies that are supposed to treat us, as human beings, first and foremost, and Americans because we were born here, we still they still try to disqualify. Well, they talk about, well, you know, you black people keep killing each other. Well, the fact is, are we going to address the issues that came to this? Are we not going to address slavery? Are we not right. going to address, you know, segregation, all the racist policies, Jim Crow, you know, DNA right. in terms of how we – Flashback because our ancestors were brutalized and how we catch flashbacks right. on things. I mean, our our, our uh, substandard education. We we are we want you know we try to get jobs and we're denied this. We're not going to talk about the inherent racism that happens in this country that so many people, black and white, try to say does not exist. And we're going why to you ignore think all of that. And all the go ahead, King. Hey, go ahead. I was going to say too. And why you think Fox News gonna invite us up there to talk about that? They know we gonna they gonna cut us off. <laughs> Exactly. Or as Nas said, Fly Fox. Or as Nas said, Fly Fox, like he did on the album. So, yeah, I mean, you know, but these are issues with our conditions that people don't want to talk about, but they're going to look at the after effects of it, but not looking at what contributes to it. And um, I think these issues need to be addressed. You know, uh, we are not, uh, our history has shown Benjamin Banneker who created the first working clock, Dr. Charles Drew, mm. who had the first blood transfusion, mm. you know, mm. George Washington Carver developed over a thousand products from peanuts. I mean, mm. are you going to tell us that we are a race of barbaric people? Our ancestors in Egypt, before that known as Kamei, mm. we, the pyramids, right. you know, we are, <laughs> right. uh, uh, we are a people. We are a race of scientists, of achievers, mm, right. I mean, innovators. And most importantly, four million of us were killed in slavery over 400 years, and we still survive, and we're survivors above mm. all of that. Mm, mm. So what you just yeah, did, man. yeah, yeah, right? That's the real gospel. But what you just did is, is classified by these same people as hate speech. Why, why are you talking so much hate? Like when you call out the evils and the hate that was committed against us and it still is committed against us on their platforms, now they call that against community. That's now, now you're marginalizing or you're, 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 you know, you're going against their standards of, 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 of fairness and justice and peace and all that. Okay, you, you can't start the clock right now when you want to. We got to start the clock where y'all started the, the hate at. You know what I'm saying? And then we can and, come up to here and, and talk that. Exactly. And, and see, the thing know, is, Cam, um, yeah, go ahead, King. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was saying, too, is that controlling the narrative is the key portion of survival yeah. because the media can kill you faster mm. than a bullet. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Man. Mm. And, you know, and from that level, y'all, it's the perspective of, you know, I'm not endorsing murder of any race. I've never been that way. I have, you know, my thing is 
we are to protect our people by any means. But I don't endorse just. I mean, we're not the look. We're not like them. We're not like the Wolverine Watchmen in Michigan who were going to right. snatch up the governor. <laughs> we weren't going to do that. Right, right, right. They did yeah, right. try to. You know, I mean, we're not the ones. <laughs> Look, look, we're, I mean, we were, look, in addition to that, they were talking about bombing police precincts, killing cops. I'm like, but we're the, but we're the, we're the savage animals. We're the ones that, you know, we're the ones that are a threat to law enforcement. I'm like, we, 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 we ain't do none of this. You know, I'm like, right. And I would tell. And see, man, the check this, brother, is also going back to the origin of controlling the narrative of the media because that's why. It's an honor to have Cam on here because he stands yeah. for an organization that hated by the media. So that's why I right. love this dialogue that we have in him on right now. And another right. question to, right. to shoot him on about is people that, you know, that show love to the nation, it's like when they go on and die, they, they pretty much try to control the narrative of the story. You seen that with how they do with mm. Malcolm X. You seen that how they do with Muhammad Ali. Right. And even right. what I'm seeing, how they try to do it with Tupac. You do you know how they try to use like Tupac and Malcolm X, and they try to big them up and make it like they mm. were stand up guys, but they didn't like it or respect the nation get down. But <laughs> Tupac actually wanted you on his album. Oh wow! Well, yeah, always had that yeah that was. Respect. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 when he when he first got out of jail, um, speaking of that Made in America album, my second album in '95, um, that, that's that's the first thing he told me when he, he called me. One of the homies he had called me from the studio. He had just got home. And he was like, "Cam, man, you know that 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 song you made, Trust Nobody, man, that got me that got me through my whole time, man. You know, what I'm saying I, I I got that tatted on my neck and such and such and this and that. Like he, you know, his his whole um, I ain't gonna say his whole get down, but he was heavily influenced by, of course, by L.A. and by brothers like myself. Like we had a, we had a, you know, a, a common denominator. You know what I'm saying? The, the Panthers and the, and the Nation, of course, we know the common denominator. They, they came, they came out of the, the the Nation. They came from Malcolm when Malcolm left, and you know he wanted to pick up the arms and you know and do things a different way or, or whatnot. But it was still the same goal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, and like 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 King was saying about um, you know controlling controlling the narrative and and who tells the stories and like you know you promoting Tupac like he was this and promoting Malcolm like this and promoting Martin Luther King like, like this all after they dead and gone. But while, when they was here, you wasn't you wasn't messing with them at all. When he was here, nobody nobody was saying their name. You know, Malcolm wasn't no top news story, and and he definitely wasn't no hero to the to the to these to this machine to this media machine. And that's why, like you say, you know, you 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 got respect for for me for for being here and knowing that I represent something that's against their narrative and they they news machine. That's why I personally respect uh, Trump. I don't I don't agree with him. I know he's the enemy, but I see who he calls his enemy. And he call, he calls the news fake news, and that's all code language for those that that he know owns and and controls that that news media, which are Zionist Jews. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the the, the all all white Jewish people. I, I don't have no problem with you know people that that really practice the Torah or the you know the teachings of Moses and trying to be right and moral and all that. But like the, what Minister Farrakhan had the issue with has an issue with and, and what they try to punish Nick Cannon recently for. And that's why this whole culture vulture song came out about Vlad is, is, you know, they, they know that they're using the media, their media machine to, to smear and slander and sway, you know, our population, the ignorant masses to, to hate who, who they want us to hate or to love who they want us to love. So, like I said, Trump, he's saying, you know, the news is his enemy. You know, the, the the mainstream news is his enemy because it's a it's a internal or behind the scene deep state war b- between those camps. Be, be, you know, behind the scene that that those same media owners are trying to use their media to pull us ignorant black masses into to be pawns and soldiers on their side unknowingly. 
to go against Trump and his his camp and his supporters. And when we supposed to be at, we ain't supposed to have nothing to do with that, because the real terrorists and the real threat are are white militia. You know, it's it's not the blacks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the, the Zionists want to use us ignorant blacks and manipulate us through their media by our emotions to be the soldiers that's going to fight Trump's white militia and wipe us both out. And, and they sit back and laugh. You know, Cam, and that's something that is a very – it's a real thing because when you look at a lot of the situations, um, you know – and I'm going to just be real. Once again, I'm not endorsing violence yeah. against anybody. But when you look at what black people have been through, and I've read this meme, and it is true, I'm like, y'all are lucky. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it still resonates. Yeah. But it said, y'all are lucky black people only want to be treated fairly as opposed to wanting revenge. <laughs> because we got a lot to be angry about. Man. You know, but it's, um, Man. Like, but when you look at it, yeah, but when you look at it, and we have to be real about this in terms of, you know, what happened with 45 getting elected and everything, because this was a referendum of how, you know, when I look at it and, you know, you got, you, you know, one, you know, you got a lot of the, a lot of racists out there who will say, well, you, you know, you black people have it good. You know, what are y'all complaining about? And I'm like, well, we got a lot to complain about, but my thing is, let's talk about y'all. When have y'all as white people ever been oppressed in this country where you're going to talk about, you know, you know certain things like mm-hmm. it's a you know especially with what's going on. Y'all can't y'all got to wear a mask, so this is violating y'all civil rights. I, I'm like right, well, right. You, it, you, it's like slave. And, and, yeah, and I'm <laughs> like y'all. Last time I checked, a lot of y'all, you know, pretty you know, y'all weren't forced into slavery the way we were. Now there was indentured servitude going back to Jamestown, and of course, you know. um you know, back in the old days when we were coming from, you know, England, when, we, when the pilgrims were escaping England trying to get from under the crown. I mean, that's a deeper history. Right. In terms of being forced, they got you know, in, back in, in indentured servitude, yeah, I mean, you could at least work off your debt. We pretty much had to they got we got back. snatched that's out of thing. Africa. <laughs> yeah, once we got snatched <laughs> out of Africa, we had to stay there. We had, we couldn't go back home. <laughs> right. You know, so right. it is. So I, and now, and, but when you look at a lot of these domestic terrorist plots, you know, with Timothy McVeigh blowing up the Oklahoma City uh, Federal Building, you know, I mean, when mm-hmm. you look at the situation yeah. back in the day with uh, uh, what's his name, Robert Hansen, who was spying, you know, for Russia, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. Aldrich Ames, who was spying. Both of these guys worked for the FBI and were getting paid off to spy against this very, this very country that yep. they were from. I'm like, these are not people of color who have committed some of the most egregious acts of treason against the very land right. that so many say that they claim, claim to love. But I'm like, where are, the, where are the bad guys in all of this? I'm like, if you're going to say we're wrong on certain levels, you know, then you have, then I, my only thing is it cannot be an arbitrary assessment of who is going to recognize when it's wrong and when it's when it's wrong. I'm like, no, if it's wrong right. here on certain levels, we need to address it when it all went wrong in terms of – I'm like, black, we do not – last time I checked, there has not been a news report of any black militia ready to storm a state house and take a sitting governor and try to start a civil war in this country. I have not seen that yet. Man. I doubt I will see it. Man. No, you ain't going to see it. You ain't going to see it. And, and, and <laughs> we know it's to, black. To bring it all the way back. Be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm saying to bring it. Yeah. Um, th- this the concept and the subject of of reparations. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you if mm-hmm. if white people know that they enjoy you know the the power position in the world and the privileged position in within this country because of what their people did to our people for the last 400 years, not to mm-hmm. mention the the PTSD and the trauma and all the stuff that they know we have. But that that they gave their own people, white immigrants from Europe, you know, tens and hundreds of acres of land, you know, as soon as they touch down over here. But, they, you know, we we don't have no land or no territory to call our own while they establish for their own white brothers, you know, because of their suffering in 1948, a, a state or a, a separate territory called Israel, which 
which we've been was, funding uh, with right. our with our slave ex slave tax dollars since 1948 to the tune of billions with a B, billions per year. You know, that is something that they know that they owe us, and and just. This past March or April, because of coronavirus, you know, white America, white U.S. government knew, knew how to reach in their ass pocket and find about two or three trillion dollars for, just for coronavirus alone. But they, they, within the last 150 years, they they couldn't find they they couldn't you know find nothing for reparations for, for this. Yeah, they bankrupt. But anytime it's time to do something for niggas, they bankrupt. But when, when it's time to do something for their own white Jewish brother in 1945 with with President Truman, he used his power and influence on the United Nations, with the, which United States is is actually the you know the 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 controller of you know United States and Israel. It only took him it only took Truman three years to set set up the state of Israel to go gangster that territory from Palestine and move in yeah. the first 100,000 white Jewish people from Germany to, to Palestine, to, to so-called Israel. It took them only three years to do that. That's less than one yeah, presidential I, term. And unfortunately, that's why, you know, um, and like I said, we, we just speak the facts. You know, we're not trying to slam or slander anybody, but I mean, but that's why. But I tell anybody, I can understand, you know, uh, we have to start in terms of what happened with World War II being just, any you know for uh, for a mindless slaughter of people, you know especially under the guise mm. that they stole everything from you like what Hitler did because that's how he managed to control right. the narrative like King said, you know when you have a situation with Germany after what happened with the Treaty of Versailles in World War One and how Germany was just totally defeated, you have a guy who mm. was a, uh, I mean how 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 might history have been drastically different had Hitler been accepted to that art school. You know, um, mm. you know, because this mm. guy eventually, this guy had so much disdain and hate, and so much he he managed to stir a populace that was disenfranchised and angry, found the Jewish people to blame it on, murdered them. You know, Auschwitz. You know, I mean, you know, the concentration camps. You know, uh, I mean, so obviously this was a situation after what happened. We. You know, we wanted to do our part to help. We, like you said, relocated them to the Middle East, which would be, which was Palestine, which we set up the state of Israel for. And then, of course, Palestine, understandably, got upset because it's like, yo, this is our home. It's like, y'all just going to come and just bogart our shit like that? Right. You know, and um, right. I mean, these are just facts. I'm just speaking this from how these people felt. I'm not saying. You know we're anti-Semitic. We are not. You know, but that this is just how history <laughs> draw drew itself out in terms of why the conflict is so, because it turned from one end of it where the land was there and it's been encroachment, encroachment, encroachment to where, you know, the Palestinians understandably are like, you know, how much more, you know, uh, they're only going to take so much. In terms of how they feel, right. and that, I tell anybody that's like any situation where when we what we have in the what we have in terms of demarcation lines of demarcation easement in terms mm. of where the lines are mm. between properties between neighbors and someone keeps coming onto your property and they keep encroaching and encroaching going over that easement until they done took your shit and now you're you're yeah. like well no you you're gonna stop right here or we're gonna have a problem. Um, mm. You know, uh, but this is something that when we look at this, I mean, but blaming other Coldport people for your problem. And the cold part, T Max, is that it's, just, mm-hmm. it's real dialogue that's documented in in the history books and the textbooks, and it's well documented right. by a lot of scholars. This is actually what right. yeah. Nick Cannon and Professor Griff was basically debating about, but they call feelings and they basically humble my man. So, yeah, yeah, and they claim that they don't, and they claim that they don't control. You know, they think they claim is that we conspiracy theorists when we say that quote unquote Jewish, you know, people control the media and own this and own that. But they prove it every time. You know, a, a black artist you say something that they don't like, they cancel you. They, if they got the power to cancel you, that means they control the ability to cancel you. So you are the ones that's in control. So how are you yeah. claiming that we anti-Semitic or we hating or we lying on you 
and it's a, a theory when you prove it every day. You prove it every time, we, you know, we do something you don't like. And with what I just said, that's why I wanted to emphasize how much this stuff is rooted in history books because, you know, one thing about it, like I said on this show, we do not want to be errant or irresponsible, but we speak on it. And like I said, right. when you look at how – and I tell people – you cannot tell the story of how the state of Israel was founded without talking about the conflict that has ensued to this day because of it. You know, and I mean, even the right. situation is going on now with Benjamin Netanyahu, and now he's, from what I understand, on trial for some stuff. I mean, you, you look at what happened with Yitzhak Rabin, who was assassinated, I believe, mm. in 1995. You know, you look at Yasser Arafat. You know who died right. years ago. Who these these men were the were people who were the integral peacekeepers. Of course, Yasser Arafat being the leader of the PLO, the Palestinian Leadership Organization. These mm-hmm. are people who were really trying to keep everything straight. You know between right. the the tensions. I mean, you know, this is something that. You know, they were like, well, we don't like this, so we got to figure out how if it's here, we got to live with each other. You know, but um, there's always, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. They don't want to acknowledge it because, you know, information is power. And as long as they want to keep on controlling that narrative and not really getting that truth out because another generation, we live in the information age, and people could expose Mm -hmm. it quick. So yeah, when they get that yeah, out then you held you held res- uh-huh. you held responsible. Yeah. yeah, they know if they if they get proven to be guilty of what we know that they're guilty of, then then they have to be held accountable, and then you you owe now now you publicly owe a, a, a specific debt, restitution, penalty, or whatever whatever it is to a, a certain uh, group of people. That you that you know how to do it because you've been doing it for Israel. Even, you know you 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 know how to do it for, for a group of people that you quote unquote are not the ones responsible for for injuring or destroying. But for the ones that you are responsible for injuring, you, it's such it's such a crime against humanity on a, such a large scale that you know the the real justice for that is is extermination. And that's why we're not talking about just like you said, uh, T. We we're not talking about doing that, but. God, God is if you claim to believe in God. If this supposed to be a Christian Judeo nation, and you know the prophecies of the Bible, where Thomas Jefferson himself, one of the five, founding fathers, said, "I tremble, I tremble for my nation when I reflect on the fact that God is just and that His justice will not sleep forever." We know what we're doing to these niggas. We we know that we're the Pharaoh and they're the, the slaves that we're doing this to, and at some point. If the prophecy is accurate, like we know it is, we're sentencing our children, our, our descendants, 400 years from now to pay the price for what we're doing to these people of God today. So I don't care how nobody feel about it. You can you can call it hate or whatever all you want. What, 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 y'all didn't care about how we feel or felt about it for the last 400 years. Our feelings are irrelevant to me. Now, I want to ask you And you know what's foretelling is that, okay, you know, ahead, you... and starting with you going on with the Culture Vultures track, which was which is a mm. knocker, I might add. Well, that's probably one yes, of my it was. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're about to get into it deep now because, uh, uh, King, I'm going to let you have this right here because I'm going to sit back and just start laughing because I know you're going to say some shit is going to crack me <laughs> the hell up. <laughs> I'll tell you, now, now, see, the thing is with that is this. It's, with, this, with, with his platform, see, what bothers me is his platform. It ain't the fact that he has a platform. Because, you know, you got ABC, CBS, mm-hmm. right. NBC, all right. on. What bothers yeah. me about his platform is what his his titles. So-and-so did right. drugs. Mm-hmm. And so-and-so shot this person. You profiting mm-hmm. off of this. But now... Mm-hmm. You criticizing your people now. You got an issue now. You want to this uh, whole thing yeah. purposely throw. Um, I said this on your. I think I said this on your live. I said this on. He want to throw blow whistles at your people because you know, <laughs> Farrakhan <laughs> got the heat going on with um, with his speech. Now you want right. to throw blow whistles at your people and purposely misquote them. That's why I salute you right. for really. Pushing that line, and look, man, you purposely lied, dude. 
Right. Yeah, you purposely yeah. did it. You and too you too intelligent. We all know how sharp and intelligent you are as, as a self proclaimed top journalist. You know who you're supposed to vet. You know how you're supposed to vet any type of controversial statements like that. You know, especially with 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 that figure, Minister Farrakhan, the most hated, feared, you know, per- persecuted, slandered, or whatever. You know, whatever your feelings about him is extreme. You either extremely love him, extremely respect him, or extremely hate him. So if you know this is a person that inspires extreme feelings. So right. You're supposed to be that extreme in your vet, vetting process before you speak on that, but you knew you were speaking in a way that was that you're trying to lure and, and lead D.L. Hughley and your four million other viewers against Farrakhan and whatever he, he, he said or believes in or what he teaches, all while you have Lord Jamar as, a, as your co-host. And, and six years ago, you specifically asked him – Face to face on your show, do you believe that the white man is the devil? And he told you to your face, yes. You know what I'm saying? White, I, I believe the white man, white, white, white man is the devil. But you didn't have a problem with that. You, you know the devil is supposed to be hated. If you're not supposed to hate no per- type of person or entity or human or whatever, the devil is who you're supposed to hate. So if you ask Lord Jamar and you pressed him on your live, you know, on your on your show, and and he told you, yes, to, to me, you are the devil. You are one of the devils. You didn't have no problem with him. So why would you have a problem with Farrakhan saying something about picking up a stone, or, and, you know, and you, you knew it was the stone of truth and hurled truth against falsehood, but you, you intentionally wanted the, the people, namely D.L. Hughley and, his, and him as an influencer of black people, to, to feel and think that Farrakhan was talking about you know, doing some Hitler stuff to Jews and shit. You know what I'm saying? So for that, you know, dude is my my enemy. You know, he just came on my radar with that. I went on his show. I didn't know nothing about him. My, my homie that I did the Mutual Respect album with set that interview up. Like you said, all of them dudes is the same to me. Whether you, uh, every journalist on Fox News or CNN or MTV, all of those are Vlads to me. So it's, it's you know okay, that's nothing special. But they don't they don't try to make their platform uh, personalized. Like this is my platform. I'm Wolf Blitzer, and I'm Wolf Blitzer. Say that Farrakhan is this and he's that. Okay, well Wolf, Wolf Blitzer is going to get this work then. I'm, since you want to stand out there and use you know, <laughs> so that that's how that happened. And it, it has just begun. The campaign has just begun on that. You know, I'm starting you know, Cam, to see a, a paradigmal mm-hmm. shift going on, man, because he went from 4.28 to 4.26. And I'm starting to see Lord Jamar, he's picking up a lot of steam with his podcast. So I'm, He actually so went, from, he went from 4.4. He went from 4.4 to 4.2. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. that was a nice little chunk. But, but it, it's not even about that. It's about his his inability to enjoy a peace of mind. I don't care how much money you got. You can be Howard Hughes and, and pissing in, in bottles and lining the piss up, on, uh, you know, along your wall and going crazy. Your, your money don't mean you're going to be happy. You know, the real the real punishment is to punish a person's mind, and that's what's going on with him right now. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, and I'm we, glad we you talk- put that out there, man, because that speech that uh, Farrakhan did on the 4th of July it's like a lot of networks was, like, blocking it. Like, they, and you put it on yeah. YouTube, and they take it down. Uh, Pop yeah. got to put it on Revolt, and they take it down. So <laughs> it's, all about, it's all about how they controlling the narrative, and that's a dangerous game that he was playing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and that, that and, proves that they control it. And the one thing about it, Cam, is, uh, you know, because we, we got to – we. Yeah, King. Can we call, can we call him by the nickname on the air, or we, or do we kind of try to refrain from that, or do we just go uh, and just uh, say fuck it? Oh, <laughs> Deputy Noodle. <laughs> yeah, we call him Deputy. Oh, Deputy oh, Deputy. oh, 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 the, the yeah. Vulture. Deputy. Yeah, Deputy yeah we call him Deputy, Deputy Noodle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Triple D, Deputy Noodle. Uh, so, okay, uh, all right, all right. Yeah, that. Yeah, um, but the thing is with uh, with uh, Vlad is that we we watch. The the thing that is, uh, aside of how he will just outright just distort 
facts and the truth on things. From a up from the from a lighter end of it, when I watch how he does interviews with artists, you know, especially, um, he he never really talks about their music. It's always about the most ratchet ass shit that they've been involved in. And I'm like, dude, right, these people right. on the show, I'm like, talk to them about their music, about their aspirations, their dreams, what they're trying to accomplish. Don't talk about all the bad shit that they did. I'm like they're trying to get right. away from all of that, you know. They're you know, right. and it's, you know, I'm like these, um, you know, uh, and this is and yeah, I'm gonna shamelessly plug this kid right here because I'm loving him from Northern <laughs> California. This dude named M. B. Mel, yo, he's mm. I believe he's from Rich, mm. uh, believe he's from uh, Stockton, Stockton, California. He's doing the young boy doing mm. his thing, a uh, Filipino kid. He's really he, he's burning mm. it up right now out of Northern California. And the way Vlad okay. interviewed him, I was not feeling it. I'm like, yo, I'm like, because he, you know, you could see some of the MB is nice, and uh-huh. to have, I, and I and I felt like Vlad didn't really do him justice to, with the line of questioning. I'm like, okay, we get it. The dude been in trouble before, but let's talk about how his music be slapping. You know what I'm saying? You know about right, how he's right. putting on and how he's turning his life around. You know, um, especially <laughs> repping the Filipino right. community in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, let's give the highlights instead of the lowlights. And for a luminary figure right. like uh, Farrakhan, who has been you know, there for years, who has meant so much to the culture. Um, also, Cam, me and King wanted to ask you about this because, of course, 95 mm-hmm. with the, uh, you know, with the East mm-hmm. Coast, West Coast. Million Man March. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, with the, well, yeah, with the East Coast, West Coast. Beat. The Million Man March, for him put, for him announcing that in, 90, in late 94 and then it coming to a 95 to fruition, which is beautiful. But he was also one of those people who also – was instrumental as well in terms of getting the coast together to ultimately quell the East Coast, West Coast beef. Um, now, of course, you know, we can't mention that, of course, without speaking on the West Side Connection, of course, Ice Cube, Dubs, D Mac 10, and, you know, their right. feelings on it. We can't speak on it with Cam with his response record. I mean, with, uh, with Common with his response record to uh-huh. you called The Bitch and You. I mean, people. You know, right. A lot of our younger audience may not fully understand the scope and the scale of what this, of how real this thing was. I mean, you know, the Source Awards, right. when Suge Knight said was basically, you know, we all uh, perceived as a mm-hmm. shot at Puffy. You know, I yeah. mean, you know, uh, this is, this is a lot going on. I mean, please, because you were on the front lines. Yeah, you were here when all of this happened, Cam. I mean, tell us about what that time was like and how the minister and other people came in to really try to, you know, and ultimately quell the situation. Yeah, I mean, he did. He did. Like, you know, I, I'll say single-handedly because of his, his respect and his um, muscle that he never uses, you know, he got a whole army that sometimes will flex without him, you know, wanting to flex, but for for righteous for righteous reasons, you know, Tim, because we all mm-hmm. know wrong from right, and all of the, you know, when one of us mess up, you know, it it, it jeopardizes all of us. So, right to to see on my side with 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 a. Uh, with Suge and Death Row and them, you know, the, the page that they was on, you know, I, I, I know all them, them, them dudes, and I, I knew what it was about. It was just some industry stuff. But unfortunately, right. the people that control the media, you know, they, they took that, ap- that opportunity and, and, and helped fan the flames into some, something else. And right. once you do that, you know, they're behavioral scientists, like Satan, like like Minister Farquhar was talking about on the July Fourth. We don't believe that Satan or God, you know, is, is is no spooks or no ghosts. These are all characteristics of human beings, and Satan uh-huh. is not devil. Devil, devil is just a, a weak, wicked person that's you know could be any color. You know what I'm saying? Really, right? But Satan is one who's wickedly wise. 
you know what I'm saying, his wickedness and his weakness is not confined to himself. He seeks to spread his wickedness to others by, by wise scientific means. So these people are behavioral scientists, the people that know how to market and advertise this to children and do subliminal messages and suggestions to, you know, to this people or that people and stir up your emotions this kind of way or, or do these kind of reality shows or, or these type of TV shows that, that triggers you know, certain traumas in women and makes women, you know, hate, hate men or, you know, this, this, they're behavioral scientists, you know, scientists of evil. So minister, he, 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 he been knew that and he been teaching us that and helping, you know, give us rappers that, that, that got respect for him, give us these bars and, and let us see it for ourselves, And then kind of like implement and test the waters in our personal life and then test the waters and in the music business drop drop a bar here, a bar there, and just see how it really affects our people. So it, it all proved to be true. It's all science. It's just sad mm-hmm. that, unfortunately, that it's, it's, it's emotion when, when you're dealing with the masses of the people. They don't have scientific knowledge or understanding. And the less knowledge and understanding you have, the more you, you automatically default, default to instinct and emotions, appetite, instinct, mm-hmm. and, e- and emotion. You know what I'm saying? And just like a, just like the, the 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 sheep, blind sheep, or the beast of the field, and that's why we call you know the mark of the beast. We got the mark of the beast. We don't have the mark of intelligent, God knowledgeable people no more. We've been reduced to such ignorance and and robbed of a knowledge itself that we we walking around like little beasts, preying on each other and being preyed on. You know, um, you know, Cam, and that's some deep shit you just said because especially me being a proud black man in this country. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been hard for me at times, especially growing up, because when you're when you're intelligent, it's hard from your. Mm-hmm. I can deal. I've always been able to deal with white people because right. I understood them on a certain level of intelligence. And when they talked to me, even at a young age, they knew, okay, this this dude ain't stupid, you know. Yeah, but it was uh-huh. always uh-huh. dealing with my own people that was hard because it was like, <laughs> you know. It's like for me being intelligent, we're supposed to be uplifting each other, especially in a country where we have been so disenfranchised and marginalized. You know, the very, right. I think yeah. this is why we see a lot of the issues that happen in the hood the way that they do because there is such a defined line between the have and the have nots among black Americans. You know, and if you have it, you're, you know, you're, you're okay. You know, um, you, can, you can survive yeah. in some way. It's not going to be perfect, mm. but if you're poor and you ain't got it, you know, uh, it, it's it's, yeah. it's you're you're gonna get it by it's rough. Time. You gotta kill. You gotta kill your brother to get it. A lot of times, that's what the thing is. They will do. And I tell people in terms of behavioral right. science, this is why you don't see a lot of situations. Although it does happen, but you could say not as frequently, because white people have never been oppressed in this country the way black people have. Because being white right. in itself is privilege. Now, it doesn't all, yeah. you know, if it really goes to another level, it's about the white people that have money and the ones that don't have money because the ones that don't have money are going to be stuck, <laughs> you know. That's you know, being you. white, yeah, white is on it. You know, being white sometimes in this country is going to get you so far because the overarching color is green. But, if, mm. you know, but mm. you're not going to have to deal with the element of racism of being denied something because you were white. You know, this is what a lot of people say right. now, that white privilege doesn't exist. It does. And you know, so what you're black is, check this. If you really think about it, that's what the Joker mm-hmm. movie represented. It represented a, exactly. a unprivileged you, white. Yes. Yeah, it's what mm. if you look at it on that hindsight, it represented underclassmen trying to fit in with the upper class. And he got rejected, so mm. he wanted to form his own army. And it's mm. like what Lyndon B. Mm. Johnson once said, if you can convince the lowest white man that he's better than the average color man, you can empty out his pockets. Hell, give him something right. to look down on, and he'll empty out his pockets for you. Man, you know, man. And, 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 and it's the scientists, like you said, though, it's the scientists that, that um, are, they are white. The, the, you, know, you know, at the root, you know, it, it doesn't mean that they all, they're for whites, but they they are they are they are at the elite level. They they still are for white, but they're just for white elite. They don't care about their their white masses either. But 
you know, they, they still stick to a, a, a blue blood type code, you know, when it comes down to it. And it's, it's, it's natural. It's not, it's not to be an emotional thing. It's just like a leech. That's why I even put that in the vulture culture vulture record. A, a leech is doing or a virus or whatever. Everything wants to live. A leech didn't ask right. to, to didn't create itself. I was created. I was made this way. So I have to kill a host. I have to be a, a, a harm and a detriment to a healthy host, you know, in order for me to be healthy. So somebody, somebody got to go, you know what I'm saying? It, it's going to be war regardless. So right. good is constantly in battle with, with, with bad and, you know, darkness is constantly at battle with light, you know, so it's not about looking at it emotionally. It's looking at, looking at it scientifically and finding out what is the, 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 the smartest, wisest solution to, to this problem. And, you know, in the nation, we always say it's, it's separation. If you're dealing with a, mm-hmm. if you have a, a relationship and it's an abusive relationship or if it's, it's a toxic relationship and neither party is going to change or appear that, that they're going to change no time soon, the solution is to separate. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened you know, when I keep yeah. bringing up Israel. You know, Israel separated. Yeah. They're not in Germany no more. So they, they didn't move back to Germany. <laughs> right. And that's wild too, Cam, because see, a lot of people don't know about this as well because, um, and once again, this is, just, this is actual history for our listeners. Look it up because I'm not just running off some random ass hate speech. This is real shit that happened. <laughs> um, what happened, this Disclaimer. was in the 70s. Uh, <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heavy disclaimer. But this was actually, I believe, at a Malcolm. X, this was at a Nation of Islam meeting, I believe, in the 1960s that Malcolm X was heading up, right. and the American Nazi right. Party, which was headed up by George Lincoln Rockwell, right. they yeah. actually right. came because they right. were. And there was a picture with him sitting with them, you know, among the crowd of black people, because they right. were in agreement with you know Malcolm's message then about separation right. of the races. You know, uh, well, it wasn't document. Malcolm's message. It wasn't Malcolm's okay. message. Malcolm was a, okay. a mouthpiece. That's Elijah Muhammad's message. And, okay, and, and the ignorant ones among our people, think, you know, use that meeting and, and that to say that the nation was in cahoots with the KKK or something like that. Like, that's how dumb we are. And, and we, we would have to fight our people when, when they don't even know that it was negotiations going on so we can be separated and have our own separate territory and states in, in the United States and in, in, in the South. And if, if any of them was coming through our states or our cities, they get a pass and they won't mess with us and we won't mess with them. But, but I- ignorant black people call that, yeah, ignorant black people call that in cahoots. Like, like they're in cahoots. Like, you know, they're, they're, they sold out to the, to the, to the white people or something like, no, that's in the Bible. That's in the Quran and all of that about negotiating an exodus, negotiating terms of separation. So where we respect your boundaries, we don't want to live among y'all. Y'all don't want to live among us. Let's, let's do this. And we still can do business with each other, trade and commerce, all of that. We just understand intimately and personally, we're not going to get along with each other on close quarters. That's what that was all about. And I thank plus you for the, that, Cam, plus, you know, because to add a that's humor a real, to it, I yeah. tell these people this. Hey, I have to add a little mm-hmm. humor to this. I tell these people this. If I'm looking at you, you black power and all this online, I see you shaking hands with your boss, I could say the same thing. Right. 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 <laughs> right. right. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, Cam, we, we, thank you for the, we thank you for breaking that down, Cam, because this is a perfect segue into another inquisitive what are we going to do about some of these crazy ass? Because we all we're 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 all relatively smart individuals here. What do we do about this false information that keeps getting out, where people are just taking the most craziest of stuff and trying to pass it off as fact? How do we stop this spread of of, of false, you know, people reading online from questionable sites that are not even vetted by real historical accuracy and then trying to run with it like they're the second coming of, you know, mm. the epistle of right. wisdom. When they're when they're, I'm like I'm like, look, I'm like some of y'all niggas could barely finish a fucking sentence in second grade. How the fuck are you gonna say that you're smarter than I they getting I'm right. like, y'all niggas ain't even graduate high school. And I'm like, y'all gonna right. tell me that I'm yeah, but, but we, we have a – like you said, Cam, because this is something we wanted to ask you as well, because in the black community, like you said, there's a lot of emotion and instinct, but not enough logic and science. And even among us, right. 
when black people disagree, it turns into a heated not down drag out and sometimes somebody gets killed over it argument. Mm. Um mm. how is peep how do we as a people begin to communicate with each other in our community of really understanding we may not agree and then one of us might even be wrong and we have to admit that we're wrong, but not let it get to a personal attack of somebody's intelligence or, you know, this this other, you know, thing of questioning their uh, racial identity. You know, these these uh, mm-hmm. what's the word? These this this, this, this barometer of blackness. Mm. Mm. I see. Um, it's a lot of us have become little pseudo, pseudo behavioral scientists also with this with the social media, and, and we know that. Uh, beef or, or, or conflict or being bold enough to to disrespect somebody with you know publicly like it's a lot of these young little dudes that that, that talk real foul and foul mouth and reckless about the minister about Mr. Farrakhan or the Nation of Islam or whatever and, and they use the, the subject y'all killed Malcolm so since since y'all killed Malcolm you know Y'all, y'all, mother, it, mother effort is, and y'all kind men that nigga this and nigga, you know what I'm saying, and, and showing the ultimate bold public disrespect, trying to get a rise out of the people because you know us as 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 unwise and 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 childish, immature sheep, basically. That's attractive. That looks strong to us. That looks like you know, oh, he going against he going against the institution, like like we the like we're the the slave slave master people now like now now we're this the racist slave institution that's 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 done the black community so wrong or whatever they killed Malcolm or they did this when Malcolm X himself said that his his assassination was bigger than the nation he thought it was you know something going to happen to him from the nation but it, it he he lived too long he he knew the, the arm and the muscle and the strength of of the nation of Islam because he he trained most of them for you know almost a decade so he knew what the nation would have would have done if if they really wanted them and the nation right. didn't follow him to to Egypt and to Cairo across overseas or whatever the Middle East where he got poisoned and people was tra- tracking him and trailing him and all of that so even if you saw the Netflix special about who killed Malcolm X or whatever you know Farrakhan name was never mentioned you know what I'm saying. We clearly saw, if you want to take that as gospel, that that it was it was being traced back to the FBI and some FBI files that was sealed, and they they knew it. So right, you know how, how would how would we be in cahoots if you see that every time the minister, you know, Mister Farrakhan speak or any any black person of of influence says anything good about him, then they fire him and punish him and all that. Like, it's like how could we be in cahoots if 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 you're getting punished for even saying something good about them, but then at the same time you you're trying to say that you know, or you let our ignorance say with movies like Spike Lee made and whoever else that and that you know they killed Malcolm. You know that's the, that's the biggest emotional thing that the enemy knows that they have to use. It's it's the emotion. Stir up these niggas, these dumb niggas' emotions. Create a hero for him. He was our number one. Villain. We didn't give two two shits about no Malcolm when he was here. He was the number one anti semite. But once he's dead and gone, now we can resurrect him up as a hero and use our global media power to promote it like he was the the, the, the real hero and the leader. Just like you just said, it was a uh, um, Rockwell was with Malcolm Malcolm X's teaching. That was not Malcolm X's teaching. Malcolm X didn't have no teaching. Everything yeah, Malcolm okay. X said by his own words was like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches me thus and teaches us this and teaches us that. Malcolm yeah. Malcolm X, and this is no disrespect to Malcolm, but Malcolm Malcolm right. X was a student of Elijah Muhammad. El Haj Malik El Shabazz was was the the one with the goatee. If you ever see Malcolm yeah. X with a goatee, that right. he that right. he only lasted eleven months. You know what I'm saying? Right. Any any great speech or whatever that he did, that was why he was a minister under the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the, and the people said, well, he went to the United Nations when he was. And okay, and what did that what did that uh, accomplish? America and Israel runs the United Nations. So what did what did that accomplish? Like you know, saying that that's no diss, but I'm you know, our our people in our ignorance force us to have to reveal certain painful truths. 
you know, especially about, you know, poor brother Malcolm that got manipulated by J. Edgar Hoover, by by the Cointel Pro intercepting his his letters and his his calls and stuff like that, and 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 using a forgery specialist to to write letters back to to Malcolm X because he would write Elijah Muhammad and you know having this issue or this problem and they'll intercept them letters and and send them back saying something you know disturbing or disappointing or foul or whatever you know what I'm saying and that's how they that's how they did it that's how they created that that wedge and then Elijah Muhammad unfortunately did have corrupt family members you know people in his family that that you know that turned you know what I'm saying but that wasn't Elijah Muhammad but at that time you know he's well Elijah Muhammad is is old and senile and he don't really know and so he just he was all over the place he was disappointed but he had got he had got uh compromised by the, the CIA I mean not the CIA the uh FBI Cointel FBI. Pro, they, they got to him they cracked him well, I mean, what you're saying, Cam, I mean, this is all historical facts. You know, I mean, this is, you know, these are, you know, because, um, and I'm glad that you clarified any mistakes I might have made in my, anything I was saying, because, of course, you know, Malcolm was still in those teachings, and that was the Nation of Islam, uh, you know, gathering that he spoke of, that I spoke of earlier. So, I mean, we we need mm-hmm. to have all of this in terms of clarity, correctness, and accuracy in all aspects. Um, because one thing is, in a me and King talk about this all the time is, you know, as a people, the only way we're going to move forward is we have to have real historical accuracy. And like you said, with a lot of these pseudo-scientists, um, you know, there are some people, um, I'm only going to say this because then he was wolfing some, because he was wolfing some craziness about what happened with Kobe and uh, with Umar Johnson. And I was, and I was not feeling that. I mean, I, King probably got it on YouTube because I let I let it be known because Umar was going to all talk about if anybody got issues with me. <laughs> Umar was talking about if anybody got this got a disagreement with him or he he wanted to smoke and I was like, listen, you know, for what happened with Kobe and those and those other eight people on that helicopter, I'm like, this is not your time to start spewing some crazy right. disrespectful stuff that you have no proof at all that. Mm. You know that was the cause of it. That man, his daughter, and seven brother. other people. Yeah. Yeah. The dangerous and, part and about I, that is when we had tragedies right. like that. It would be probably it would used to be about two or three weeks before we hear something crazy like that. See, everything right. is so mm. fast paced. You get stuff like that in hours after the after the person. Man. The party. And, th- and they th- and, man. and y'all they swear up and down that they right they. They swear up and down. They mm. know some shit that we don't know. And I'm like, dude, you don't know nothing mm. about that. Mm. But, um, and like you said, they don't even have a character. They don't even have a character to apologize or to, you know, because it's it's wrong, it's slander, it's misinformation. But, you know, to me, a, a, a man that, you know, a, a man is a person that's able to apologize. You know, right. I kind of even practice right. that more often. I'm talking about publicly, especially if you're a public figure and you know you said something that was inaccurate or was wrong or was an outright, outright lie or whatever. I want to see you doing the same equal or greater energy using mm-hmm. the same public platform to apologize and, 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 and see what you could do to make it right. You know, ask the right. people, how can I, you know, how can I make it right? You know, that's that to me is is worth more than whatever the hell you think you know. It's the character of your your heart. Do you got the kind of heart to to where you willing to to accept and and take a, a accountability and responsibility for you when you wrong and promptly, not not wait till niggas pressure you to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and you know. Yeah. You know, and um, we see that so many times, uh, you know, from so many levels because uh, we got a little bit of time left, but so much more to say. Um, because we see a lot of times where a lot of where, – where whether it be pseudo-academia or, you know, and even – and we got to bring it back home to the hood, man, you know, uh, because it's like even with this – even with nowadays the whole gang affiliations, and we got a lot of these – you know, rappers yeah. claiming gang affiliations. 
you know, you was from Watts, and you was really with the shit, you know, coming up in terms of when it came to being handling business out there. What is your feeling about a lot of these individuals, you know, claiming these sets that they ain't never been to L.A., and, you know, they're trying to act like that they, you know, they blood crip pyru, you know, and, um, like, you know, just really trying to, you know, and and then also, too, trying to treat this like this is some novelty where the reality is whether you skipping, were you blood skipping or uh, sea walking. Mm-hmm. Because I ain't forgot that verse you spit on uh, DJ Quinn's West Side Drive by. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to EAC on the B. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, you you on yeah, top. Yeah, I remember that, y'all. Yeah, where the yeah, blood can get yeah. through it and the crypts can still walk. The crypts can still walk. <laughs> man. Yeah, man, I think, What's man, it's um, that? yeah, I think it's it's that they want to be these artists want to be accepted. They want to be accepted by the warriors. They know that this is war time. We all know instinctively that this is fight time. We born in right. a in a time of war, and we want to be, you know, we want to be down with with the with the right uh, army. We want and, and we know that the right army really is, you know, the, the the street army, the black street army, the descendant of slaves. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but it, we might not have had the the life experience to, to grow up in this neighborhood, or or to even even if you did grow up in the neighborhood, you didn't you didn't um. You know, you wasn't you won't bang a, like the, the ter- the cer- yeah, you wasn't banging or whatever. So, but once you once you get some notoriety as a celebrity or as a music person, as a as a as a pro athlete, then you want to use that as currency or leverage, where you know, kind of to kind of pay your dues that way to to be accepted by by your army, and that's cool. That that works if, but you're still going to have to put some work in. Your work ain't, ain't ain't on the street level, on no grimy level. Your work now got to be in 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 helping bring us up, you know, or clean clean up, help clean up our image, you know, help ed- educate us or bring us along or you know put us in positions where we can we can we can we can educate ourselves and 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 test us, test us to see because every just because you're from the hood don't mean you you good and you know what I'm saying, but at least provide some type of a uh, program or a platform or opportunity where we can we can prove ourselves. We can prove ourselves. We can bypass just the the start from scratch hood self destructive stuff and and get on board with you if you a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Turn us on to to you know how to how to invest in stocks, how to buy real estate, how to how to set up a, a LLC or something. You know what I'm saying? Because we'll listen to you because you from our hood and you a celebrity. You ain't got to give nobody no right. money. Give them some time, some real, some real concern, some real time and energy and attention, and sit down with them and say, "This is this is how I I, I open my first bank account like this, or I got my first business like this." You know what I'm saying? This is how you bankrupt a, a business or get a loan. You can get some money from the government. Like just put up put us up on. If a celebrity is giving you that kind of attention and and, and telling you how to get some, you know, for yourself, like he got it or she got it. That's that's all you you know they they love you ain't never need to, to, to get no tattoo or gang bang or shoot nobody or, or beat nobody up or nothing because you you beating up the real enemy you shooting the real enemy if you doing that for your your community. You, you know you know man and it's interesting because when we look at a lot of the uh, you know uh, because we was like young niggas when a lot of this stuff was really coming because we're not from California came yeah. from North Carolina I'm from Virginia. So a lot of the stuff we kind of picked up on, but we didn't know. But I think the one, the wildest part is that when you had a lot of niggas that was really like in the streets back in the day, you know. And I'm, you know, and I got to shout out all the legends, you know, past and present, you know, and their gangsters. Yeah. Of course, Kelly Parr, Eazy E, and Larry right. Wren, you know, right. DJ Quick, you know, Treetop, you know, Compton's yeah. Most Wanted, yeah. Trag New, you know, what I'm saying yeah. Love C, One Eleven, you know, Mac Ten, yeah. Queen Street. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, these are individuals, you know, who were, but you never heard them really talk about it on Wax, about their gang affiliation. They talked about the street shit, mm-hmm. but they never really got heavy into it from a perspective of I'm I'm claiming this or that, you know. Uh, and it's just like, but a lot right. of times, because like, they still understood it, like, yo, we, you know, 
I guess it's because when you're from the hood and everybody knows you and they know you really put in that work, you really ain't got to brag about it because everybody knows once right. you get in, you know, you already, like, certified. But now it's like a lot of these young dudes coming in, you know, um, you know, everybody, you know, it's like, you know, there's even, you know, a certain rapper who was, uh, who shall remain nameless, who was like, uh, <laughs> well, fuck it, because it's a picture of it too, and everybody been, everybody <laughs> called him out on it. It's like, it's like with Birdman. Birdman had a picture, yeah. you know, back in the day when he was throwing up crib, you know, and I mean, we know right, gangs right. spread out. You know, Ice Cube spit that right. on my summer vacation. So we know gangs not uh, good. I mean, you know, especially going back yeah. to the early 90s with the Eight Ball Alliance in St. Louis with the Vice Lords and Bloods and the Crips and the Gangster Disciples, people in Folk Nation. Mm. You know, so we know how right. far it spread out. And it came to Texas, you know, it came to uh, Louisiana. But Birdman was rocky, was mm. throwing up seeds, and then he's throwing up blood. And it's like, where, where, mm. where, where, where did this happen? You know, like, where, where, mm. like you know, it's, mm. it, it's a, and, and I mean, it's just, it's like everybody's, you know, it's like, you know, everybody wants to try to have that added certification. But my thing is, if you're an artist, it's okay to just be an artist. Hell, if you're a nerd, it's okay to be a nerd in the game and just be a nerd in rap. You know, you know, people really don't understand, I think, at times, Cam, what the street life really entails in reference to, and this is not even about Tupac and Big when we speak on people that's gotten murdered out there on the block. You know, rest mm-hmm. in peace to Mr. Sinister, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and a lot of other homies that lost their life, you know, out there on the block. You know, uh, I mean, the streets are real. Mm-hmm. And I tell anybody, you yeah. really don't, you don't want to really jump out there in something. You really don't know inheriting beefs with other sets from somebody, you know, that, you know, you, you know, with somebody you, you ain't even run with in the first place, but you claim it just because right. it's bad right. to do it. Yeah. And, yeah. Know, it's not uh, a game. It's not no video game, man. It's real life and real death, real, real prison time, real robbing of your life. You really going to take an L like everybody say, it's no happy ending. It's no, it's no, you're not going to get rich. You're not going to get no million dollars. You're not going to get nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's and how you know that it's, with it's really a, plan. nah. And, yeah, and, and, yeah. and but you know what you, you know it's it's a it's a warrior uh, accolade. That's how you know right. it's, we we naturally warriors. It's just like in, in Africa, we we know certain things that that we we had to do to prove our manhood and just to be able to enjoy life, calling yourself a man once you reach a certain age. So it's it's, it's really not about money or or fame or nothing like that it's, it's about proving something to yourself and, I, and right. that's that's a built-in thing that that black men just have in us we we we, we know we're supposed to prove ourselves as warriors at a certain by a certain age definitely now i mean now what is your feeling about you know especially coming from watch you know especially seeing a lot of the young artists especially this dude from the nick who's a grammy winner j-rock you know, how does it feel oh, to yeah, see, yeah. you know, of course, with uh, you, you know, the Watts gangsters, you know, and all the, you know, the OGs yeah. that came up, and now you're seeing the young heads like him and so many others, you know, like J-Rock come up and really carrying on yeah. tradition and really making y'all proud. How does that feel for y'all? That feel great. That feel, that feel beautiful. Like, you know, and the reason why is because he still, he lived by the cold. He, you know, he he's from... He from the project, he from the bottom, he know he from the east side, he, you know, and, and he still represent that. He didn't go weird weird Oville, you know what I'm saying? He kept it real manhood, real, you know, because it's not about your neighborhood, it's about your manhood. Mm-hmm. If you're a woman, it's about right. your womanhood. That's the very first hood, you know what I'm saying? That's the only hood that really matters is, is, is your, your manhood or your brotherhood. So right, your, your neighborhood is, you know, that that's secondary. Yes, that's, you know, that come wherever it come. But, you know, we're we're a community. You know, we're not individuals. No, no individual is greater than, than than our people. So if you if you tie it in and you a unit, and that's the part, that's also the importance of organization and discipline and unity. You can't get nothing done by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, you can appear to get something done by yourself, but you 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 disconnect it. You just like a little gazelle or a deer or something that get isolated, you know, in the in the 
in the African plains, you know, you say th- you think you're free, you think you're solo, but you don't know that all eyes on you, Jack. You know, you 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 gonna be the main one that, that the pack of cheaters and shit is gonna is gonna key in on when when the time comes. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, you know. Hey, and uh, I mean, one more we question wanted... I want to shoot to you, man. Um, before we before we bounce. Now, one of the hardest records you did, and I still got it on the rotation, man, was Murder the Murders, man. Mm. When you had that hard Dr. Dre beat, <laughs> that record was yeah. was knocking it. I, I know you played it on your IG. <laughs> I, I wanted to go right. on, on YouTube to look for it. I was like, man, this joint go hard. Now, were you gonna yeah. put that for Snoop's album or? A Dre album, or was that going yeah. for your project? No, nah, that was for Snoop and Dre. You know what I'm saying? I wrote that, you know, just like, you know, I wrote the, the, the Nipsey uh, uh, dedication record that, that Snoop did last year, that One Blood, One Cuz. So, you know, I I wrote that, you know, some years ago, and then, you know, eventually he gave, I guess he gave that beat to, uh, or he gave part of it to, to Eminem or whatever, but that was for... Um, for Dre and Snoop some years ago, they just they just never mm. did nothing with it. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, well you never. And once I heard the uh, the Eminem thing come out with you know the music to be murdered by, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh okay, well shit, I, I may as well gonna throw this out there. And you know, I ain't gonna waste my my bars either. I can't use that beat no more. So let me just gonna put that out there. So that's kind of like just exposing some of the influence that can't you know, that I've been you know, having behind the scenes as far as my pen and writing or whatever. I don't, I don't go on record and say who I who I wrote for or whatever unless they don't use it. <laughs> if they don't use it, then I can say, yeah, I wrote that for such and such, but they didn't use it. Man, I mean, Cam, this has been an, this has been incredible, man. Um, first man. off, I hope we don't get banned for this show. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But if not, nah, but, but this, but uh, we, but we, uh, seriously, we touched on a lot of things. I mean, we could have picked no better guests other than yourself to chop this up with on so many different levels of race, society, world politics, media, hip hop, and most importantly, just as human beings and how we interact with each other in our community and, and all over, man. I mean, you're welcome mm. back anytime. Anything you have for yeah, us, man. Sure we to do, man, because yeah. I, I actually reached you a couple of years back, but I was like, at the same time, I was kind of like fresh out of the fish grease. I was like, man, look, if I'm gonna have to talk to uh. this brother, I gotta be seasoned. <laughs> gotta have yeah, your your combo up a little bit, I guess. But no, nah, yeah. I'm. I, I I meet I meet you where you at just like you're gonna meet me where I'm at. You know, this ain't no formality, it's brotherhood talk. We supposed to be brothers before anything. That don't mean we agree or we understand everything. You know, I you know, I'm I'm a student. You know, you can call me a a, a, a legend or OG or I'm a I'm a I'm a legendary student. I'm still I'm still in class, so that's what I wanna be known for. Well one thing about it, man, you're, you're passing every course. You passed that look, Cam. I got to close with this. In our existence, there's always education, and there's always an endeavor and an aspiration to learn if one is with it. And for your Mm -hmm. consistency, for your consummate class, you are passing, you're still passing with flying colors in all aspects, and keep your course of consciousness always correct, consistently and perpetually, which we know you will. We thank you, Man. thank you, and thank you so much. Man, thank you, thank y'all, man, T and King. And, and one thing we kind of missed, and I got to do this shameless plug, we talk, we covered all of the areas where we, we kind of missed health. We, we missed the, health, the, 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 the area of health, especially what's going on with coronavirus and, and these, these vaccines that they're trying to push, they're trying to rush fast track. I personally am not taking no vaccines. Um, I actually, for the last 11 years, personally been uh, researching and, and, you know, I'm an independent researcher and and experimenting on myself and my family. I've been uh, manufacturing and making uh, colloidal silver, ionic colloidal silver since 2008, 2009, almost about 11, going on 12 years now. And when when this thing first hit, 
you know, this Corona thing earlier this year, you know, I started making some of that, you know, available to my family and friends or whatever. And it kind of took off and, you know, they testimonials and reviews or whatever been, been off the chains. I, for legal reasons, I, you know, I can't, you can't say, I can't say that nothing is a cure or nothing, but um, right. if you go to my website, which is westcoastcam.com, you know, you can, you can read up on some information of colloidal silver and what it does, which is, you know, it's the strongest, uh, natural, strongest known natural antiviral, you know, known to science. Peer review published mm -hmm. medical journals and scientific journals all agree for the last century that colloidal silver kills over 650 disease causing viruses, pathogens, microbes, fungi, bacteria, whatever, within six seconds, between six seconds and six minutes of contact. And no virus, no disease-causing virus has ever been able to mutate off of silver. So this is not Cam's words. These are top white scientists, global scientists of the scientific community. Like I said, peer-reviewed, published scientific facts. So I, I make this, you know what I'm saying, I've been making it, for, like I said, for my family for like 11 years. You can get it from my website. You know, a four ounce bottle of it is like twenty five bucks in the store. It's like thirty five or thirty six or something like that. I make it. Everything today is gonna to come down to who you trust. Like, do you trust Dr. Fauci and and his his team of you know whatever that whatever they putting in them vaccines? It's gonna come down to who you trust. And, right. and that's a whole another conversation we can have you know on another date about you know, what we think the agenda is behind <laughs> behind this mass vaccination program or, you know. With... Uh-oh. Are you we watching the game? <laughs> uh, I thought that was, thought you were talking to me. But, uh, yeah, that's oh, it. Wow, I just, you know, wow. just, just check out my website. Check out my website, westcoastcam.com, and, um, you know, all my, my social media is on there and all of that. But check out the, the the colloidal silver on on some health stuff. So I've been giving it to my children. You know they never been to the doctor, never been vaccinated, never been hospitalized, never had no issues, no diseases or nothing. So I use myself as as the and my family as the guinea pig or the and um, it's been working for us. So you know maybe it'll do something for you. There you have it, y'all. Another episode down in the books. We want to thank everybody that tuned in. To get this lesson, y'all got about two hours worth of supreme knowledge and wisdom. This show is so good, I might have to charge y'all a two ninety nine fee just to clock in, man. <laughs> just, to, just to listen to five minutes of it. <laughs> man, so, yeah, on that note, we about to sign out of here, man. I appreciate you joining us, man. It was an honor. It took some years to make that happen. And we definitely looking forward to having you man. again sometime soon. Let's do it. Whenever y'all ready, let's do it. Peace, man. Much respect and love. Much love, brother. <laughs>